Hey everyone, and welcome to Bite Size Tactics. In this video, I wanted to take a look at the Morlock. It's not a very common model, but it also looks super scary and very much Tyranid thematic kind of a model that you would put in narrative games. So I thought it'd be fun to have a look at. Looking at the profile, it's got a 10 inch movement, which is pretty good, a toughness of 10 as well, which means it's starting to get at that heavy armor echelon. It's also got a three plus armor save, which is okay, and 14 wounds, which is pretty good. Its leadership is 8 plus, so the standard Tyranid leadership, and it has an OC of 4, which is pretty good as well, and currently costs 145 points. It has the monster keyword, and that is important for ability, stratagems, and if you run a crush and stampede detachment. It also has the core deep strike ability, and it also has its own ability, which is terror from the deep. So basically, every time this model deep strikes, you roll a d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches of the model, and on a 2 to 4, that unit will suffer D3 mortal wounds. On a 5 plus, the unit will suffer 3 mortal wounds and has to take a Battleshock test. The Morlock doesn't have any ranged weapons, but it does have two melee weapons. The first one is the Distensible Jaw, and that's got a decent strength at 5, hits on 3s, and does a flat 3 damage. What makes it good is that it is anti-infantry 4 plus, and it has devastating wounds, so it's great, obviously, against infantry. But it is just an extra attack, so it only has one attack with the Distensible Jaw. With the Morlock Scything Talons, however, you have 16 attacks, so you have quite a lot. It's got a mid-strength at about 8, and it has minus 2 AP, and does 1 damage per wound. So this is really great against infantry units, especially light infantry units, and can do some real damage to some mounted units if you get lucky as well. The weaknesses of the Morlock is that it doesn't have an invulnerable save, so high AP and damage weapons will be an issue, and it is one-dimensional as it doesn't have any shooting attacks, so you really need to be close to your enemy. It can be screened out as a deep strike threat, and it does have quite a large base, so it might be pretty easy for your enemy to do so, especially if they've got infiltrators, space marine players, so just be wary of that. Uh, not great at dealing with high toughness enemies either, as their attacks aren't really that strong. And it doesn't have synapse, so it needs to stay in synapse range so it doesn't get battle shocked. If the model only has 1 to 5 wounds remaining, the unit becomes degraded. So the strengths are that it can deep strike, and it can do mortal wounds to enemies when it does deep strike, and this can be good with the Vanguard Onslaught Detachment, which we'll touch on in a second. It's great at killing infantry units with its large amount of attacks, and it has some decent durability as well with toughness 10 and still 14 wounds, which will be a lot to get through. Looking at the mission play of the Morlock, it still is a deep strike threat to your opponent, and if you are playing with the Vanguard Onslaught Detachment, it can be very good in that detachment as you have stratagems allowing you to pick units up from the battlefield and placing them back into your strategic reserves. So the Morlock could deep strike multiple times in a game. It's also really good with rapid ingress as you can rapid ingress in your opponent's turn obviously and then use your movement in your turn to guarantee you a charge. You just have to weather the storm. The Morlock is also great for secondary points whether you're playing tactical or fixed objectives as it does give you some really good options where to deep strike, how to score points and obviously you can go infantry hunting with this unit as well because it's got a lot of attacks at strength 8, it's basically going to munch up any light infantry unit. Even space marines will struggle with it, as you'll be wounding them on twos. Some helpful units would be the Psychophage, as it would give a 6 plus feel no pain. The Zoanthropes offer them a 6 plus and vulnerable save, and Eventhropes can give them benefit of cover, but it won't get stealth because the Morlock is a monster. And Neuro Tyrants are good because it can keep this unit within synapse range of your army. I think it's a very interesting unit to have on a battlefield. And it is quite a unique unit for people, and I feel like it'd be a bit hard to master at the moment in 10th edition. However, for thematic and narrative games, I think it's quite a cool little piece to have, especially when playing with friends. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and comment what you think of the Morlock or if you use it yourself. I know it's a bit of a different piece out there, so not too many players might have it, especially if they play competitively, but still it's fun to hear about how it goes. And if you like the content, feel free to subscribe for more.